Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the living God. Um, if these videos bless you, or if you know someone that it can bless, like, subscribe, share, or show them, hit the notification bell if you want. I don't really mind about all that. Um, but th I basically give you guys videos that will help you and in your walk with God, not the traditional kind of, you know, like, like, you know, like, a watered down version of it okay so like this is to the best of my knowledge right now that god has led me to and i try not to fluff as much as possible and if i fluff it's for a reason to make a point right um but we are continuing the series in spiritual warfare so the last one was about um renouncing rights and legal and legal grounds that the devil might have over your life for him to come back or for 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 affliction to be made right so with with job nothing could be done by satan to job in his life and his workers and his family until he was given permission in other words legal right to actually rain destruction up to the to the limitation that he was given same thing the spiritual warfare doesn't change just because we're like in the age of the sun right and the spirit where like god gives you himself through the death resurrection and acceptance of all, and all that about jesus so god almighty listen god almighty will live inside of you right not just the holy spirit it's the holy spirit is god almighty abiding with you jesus in you right so 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 this video is going to be about um I just I'm having like a brain fart for some reason. So it's basically going to be about the the process of prayer and preparation prior to um to to the actual deliverance. This is stuff that I do, right? This is stuff that um like you'll see it in different forms and in different kind of fashions but it's all basically like the same thing so basically praying before like some do need to come out by prayer and fasting because it, like and when jesus said that about the the man and the kid uh and his kid that the disciples couldn't cast him out and he said this demon comes only out by prayer and fasting it indicates that there are um multiple ways to deal with some spirits right it's not a one size fits all that now that we know that one demon didn't just come out by the fashion that the um that the disciples had but it comes out by prayer and fasting so now we know that um we are dealing with spirits that sometimes won't get out in a, the the typical routine way right so for me personally i will pray a prayer and depend if, if it's like towards the beginning like this is the first time that i am delivering to someone or do, doing deliverance for someone or with someone i guess uh by the help of god i take the book curse breaking i think it's like uh like being free in the generational bondage and sins or something like that by bob larson and i'll and i'll like like i said in the other videos go do your research before you do any of these or at least get deliverance yourself the the proper way or at least however god wants you to get deliverance and I, and when i say that i don't mean a one size fits all like like these people told the demon to leave and now i feel better because mm -mm, jesus indicates that there is a right way and a wrong way to do it because that that man that had one now had eight and is worse off than he was before so this is not some kind of like oh he said go do whatever no 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 no, no. listen sound mind okay B like sound biblical principle and reasoning behind the the strategic moves and however you actually do it right now actually you also got to think god he doesn't just d deal with people in the same way right like for 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 a blindness there was one man that he spit in his eyes and there was another man that he spit in you know the dirt right like like and then there was with those one man that, that he just he, he uncovered it he's like, oh do you see he's like oh no it's like what so god doesn't deal with the the every single even if it's the same blindness right 
It was, it was two different men that were blind that he healed in different ways, but the end result was the same, right? They're, they could see at the end of that, right? The end of, end of the reaction or end of the interaction, I mean. Um, so what I'm saying is God might deal with you some other way, right? Like I gave an example of Derek Prince. He literally read his Bible as if it was medication three times a day after meals and he got healed that way there's people that um that are worshiping god and then all of a sudden the spirit leaves right there's people that just say to god god help me and then their thing leaves there's people that get their hands laid on and then and then the the, the healing happens there's people that that they wake up healed like it, it however god wants it right but what i'm saying is that this this is one way that god helped me right in in or this is like the fashion that god helped me so this might not be for everyone right because some people god might have their his, his own plan he, nope just just go to this person i need you to see this person and then x y and z will happen whatever right so and then another thing we also got to keep in mind that this is a spiritual war Right. So is, you can't see it and you, you have to fight in the same way that it, it was fought in, in Jesus, in in the disciples and in, in all of them. Right. It's, th it's through words, through the word of God. Right. The, the, the sword of the spirit is the Bible. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Right. So 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 that's that's how we do it. But now that's where a lot of people might trip themselves up and say that's all you need just the word yeah but if you have a tool but don't know how to use it like if, if you're using a sword that was like three feet long to cut meat ah it, it, you can but there's a better use for a sword you can use a knife a smaller version of it and more precise right so so that's what i mean so like when when i'm getting into this right you don't always necessarily have to pray no, no, I mean, like, no, not pray. You, you do have to pray. What I'm saying, you don't always necessarily have to fast, right? You don't always necessarily have to, um, uh, like, read the Bible in, in a sense of, like, uh, I'm trying to say it so, like, it doesn't sound like I'm, I'm, I'm saying we don't need the Bible or we don't need, like, you know, prayer. What I'm saying is, just as I said before, even if it's the same thing that God is dealing with, he might use different means to, um, to, to reach the same end goal of freedom or liberation or, or healing, right? So, 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 so just keep that in mind as, as I speak. So when, when I go about it, I go through the book and I, at the end of the book, there's like, a, there's like a prayer that is basically outlined. And this is what it is. It's an outline prayer, right? There, there's a lot of prayer books that are uh, are really like they're anointed. Some of them are actually really anointed. And like I've read this one prayer book. I forgot. I have it at home. I haven't read it in a little bit. But like there's times where like I literally it it's like you enter into the whole nother world, like into like heaven. It's, it's crazy. Um, but like while I'm reading it, it's just like a prayer that was written out. Right. So. So I, I begin by that if that's the first thing, that's the, if it's the first person, if it's the first time the person is getting deliverance, that's how I start. So I go to the back, there's a prayer, and, and then it's basically repeat after me, right? So you say like, I so-and-so, and then you kind of read, and then it goes through. And then there's the other part where, personally, me, I read John chapter 8, verse 36, Whomever the sun sets free is free indeed, right? Like b before I get into anything like that, right? Before I get to into, into like casting out the demon or anything, I always read that as like, um, as like a reminder to myself that I was once in bondage in that way, not like eternal bondage, but like, like my everyday life, I was in bondage, right? I couldn't sleep normally. I had to take medication or else I would lose my mind. I had to... Uh, I had to basically go to therapy because it was it was good for me. Like and I chose to do it. I could have not, but I chose to do it, right? And 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 I was in a lot of mental bondage and a lot of like like it it didn't allow me to grow up, right? Like I was afraid to get a job, right? Cuz I was getting like government help, right? So like I was afraid to get a job because if that means I have to get a job, that means I have to get off my butt and stop being lazy, 
right? So, so the, the, those those are some of the things that it kind of it kind of helped me, and it, that's besides the point. What I'm saying is that so I start off with that, and I also anoint them, right? Generally speaking, we see olive oil as as um, as a key indicating like uh, oil that people use to anoint kings into kingship or, you know, like anoint someone, you know, for 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 blessings or whatever. Right. So olive oil, if you bless it and like there there are certain uh, ways to bless it. And, and I'm not going to like dictate that because I haven't really done too much of blessing a thing. But I do know that if anything, if you are an actual person that walks with God or if you know someone that walks with God, the, I guess the most basic version of like anointing oil is like literally praying over it, right? Like you, you, you grab the oil, right? You grab it and, you know, you literally cast like a, a bubble of protection around it, blessings upon it. And, and, you know, just like go through the Bible. Cause I'm not here to like basically step by step, tell you how to anoint oil. I'm just saying the most basic version of it would be praying over it, like laying your hands saying, God, I anoint this oil for healing or, or, or whatever, you know, God puts on your heart at the time. Right. So, so, so that's the most basic version of it. So I take anointing oil or anointed olive oil, I should say. And then I bless the person, right? I put seven 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 on their head and then a cross like like w w with it right like i put seven 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 and then i put a cross and i said father i seal them in the name of jesus and and, and then like prayers kind of like you know um to 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 help for for god to help us right that, that that's just what i do some people literally just put like a dot on your head or some people put a cross some people just like anoint their, their hand and then like, you know, hold their hand over your head to, to bless you. However you do it, it's still the same means of if you are a child of God, man or woman or child, you have power with God in, in a sense of he will he will flow through you and your anointing and and actually anoint the person. Right. So I'm not a stickler of like, no, it has to be this. It has to be. Not necessarily, right? In, in the sense of if you are anointed and you have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you have God Almighty and he has cleared you and freed you, there should be, um, there should be by no means some, something to hinder it, right? Unless, you know, there is something you have to kind of get, get cleared from, from God or whatever. Also, another thing is that, um, so I'll anoint them and then I'll ask God to send angels all around us, right? Now you can do it in your fashion, however you want. I, I usually say, Lord, I call upon the, like I call upon the angels of the Lord to the right, left, above and around me and in this room and the right, left and above and around the person that I'm praying for. And, and I cast a bubble of protection and I nullify all that the Satan is going to is going to have against us so that this person can get free in deliverance. Right. This is like something that you can do, like like as you get more into it at first, you, you might not know what to do, but like you'll 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 eventually get it and you'll know what to look for and what to do. Right. Um, so that's why it's always a good thing to to watch videos online or watch DVDs or something that actually do deliverance, like an act of deliverance, right? Like an active one that you're seeing it and you're seeing how the process is going right now. A lot of people will say, oh, well, you know, that's just movie stuff. That's fine. I don't care. Turn this video off and go somewhere else because I'm not here to entertain people. If, if you have beliefs of oh, all that stuff is fake. All right. Well, now you are calling what God is doing evil. That is not good. OK, so if anything, if you doubt it, turn it off, go somewhere else. Don't curse something that God is doing and it, not knowing that it's actually God. Right. Like I always like saw and like uh, some of them are fake, but I don't know which ones are. Some people genuinely go and then they're actually anointed with God inside of them. And then somebody else comes that has been seeking freedom and God just happened to move. Right. And then somebody else comes. Th they're doubting the whole time in their heart and, and they don't actually believe that God is able to do what he is able to do. They are the ones that Jesus call. Oh, ye of little faith. Right. 
What, 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 what will he do with you? Because you lack confidence in what God is able to do, right? So there's these specific things that, that will constitute whether like your deliverance will actually come to be. People can get delivered, but there's a lot of reasons why people don't, right? And, and it kind of ties back in like doubting, not believing completely. Uh, and like, whether there's something that is like, you're not hitting the right thing. Maybe you're, maybe there's a sin that they're concealing. Maybe there's something that they're not telling you. Maybe there's a, a piece of information in their life that you need to know in order to actually get a deliverance. There's a, there, there's a few more reasons, but th th just know that there are specific reasons. Sometimes it's kind of gray area. So you have to kind of like do some digging that, that basically um, would hinder the deliverance or would uh, would um, slow down the process of deliverance, right? Or, or not even having faith at all, right? Generally speaking, this is for the children of God. Why would you want to free someone that is by their nature, in their inner man with Satan? Unless God has a plan for them, this is for people of God, Listen, this that I'm teaching you is for the people of God, that God has transformed and reborn you inside. This is not for people that are still in the kingdom. They're in the kingdom of darkness. Like their spirit has not been translated to the kingdom of light. This is not for everybody, right? That's why I'm, that's why Jesus literally said the, the kingdom of God and the secrets thereof, it's not for everyone, but he tells certain people, plainly but to the masses he told him parables it's not for them to know so if you're not the kingdom in within the kingdom of god i don't mind if you if you watch these things but if you seek to be in the kingdom of god this is is another thing that will like clarify some of the spiritual warfare stuff right because christians are typically viewed as um like passive and 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 they're and they're kind and they're just nice right like they're just nice like oh like oh so and so just did this Oh, let's pray for them. But they, they, they don't actually get into the spiritual battle, right? There is no, and I'm going to say this one last thing and then I'm done with the tangent. There is no God. Listen, there is no God in all of existence that will give you the demonstration and the practical proof and the actual miracles to the degree that shows the authenticity of Jesus. Listen, he lives inside of you. He gives you power over demons. You walk in freedom and you will be blessed if you follow the word. Listen, there is literally no other God that can show you that you actually have power. over. Islam doesn't. OK, Buddhism doesn't. Mormonism doesn't. Jehovah's Witness doesn't like like Judaism is like <laughs> the old version. Not the old version. What God was trying to tell you guys at first, and then what he was trying to tell you was in Jesus, but then Jesus is rejected. So now that's done away with y'all in the curse, right? It, it, anything besides Jesus, okay? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He himself is the one you need. No man goes to the Father except through Jesus. So how in the heck do you expect to have any power except from Jesus, right? He said, I am the vine, you are the branch. Aside from, apart from me, you can do nothing, right? So so, so th th that, that was the tangent, okay? So I basically pray over them, anoint them, and then we go from there, right? And then... And then now this is where also you pray for God to, to increase his presence in the room or in the person so that uh, kind of like if you, if you are trying to uh, get something out of um, like, let's say you're, I don't even know what it's called. Okay, let, let's just say you're trying to squeeze some, oh, perfect. You're trying to squeeze something out of a toothpaste, right? And it's getting let down to like the, the flatter side. Like now you can squeeze it like, like having a fist, but like you can squeeze it like this and having a fist. But if you do it flat, 
it, it, it gets it gets a lot more it gets a lot more out of it right because it's a little it's a little more efficient right so when you ask God to increase the presence in a person it's kind of like helping the the demon get squeezed out so then like it's getting to that to, to the place within their heart mind soul and all that stuff so like it it, it brings it more to the surface that I ask God to increase the presence inside of the person so that the demon pretty much gets pushed closer to the door. And then when you actually get to the point of like renouncing and, and talking to the demon, getting information out, and then you renouncing and, and breaking legal right and all those things, like they're closer to the door of, of them leaving, right? Versus like if they were just there, right? Like now, now you have to like go through the, the whole house or go through the whole thing, right? Like, but God pushes them like closer to, 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 to the exit, so to speak, right? And then I also ask God to increase his fire inside of the person. And then I also ask God to help me as the deliverer or as the person doing doing the deliverance to, to guide me, right? Because then you and the person being delivered are, are very, very, um, you, you guys are entering into a spiritual battle, which is a sensitive spot because like you and the person is protected by God. If you know, you actually walk with God and stuff. But once, once you get to a certain point, like it's, it, it can get vulnerable for the person because they have to say, uh, re and renounce certain things that, that will help them get free. Right. So, so, so that, that's another thing. And then, and then also asking God constantly in my head as I'm praying, or as, as we're trying to get information out and having a notebook and a pencil, ideally someone else needs to be there with you. One, in case, um, like they need to write anything down Two, in case something happens with the, with the spirit, right? Because they have supernatural strength. You will just see when it happens. There's 10 year old, little short, like four, four foot five, like girls that are tossing men kid you not it's a crazy thing and when i started getting deliverance i saw what they were saying right it's a supernatural strength like you can literally toss like it's it's so baffling right because they're not human right so so they're they're spirits right so so it, it's good to have someone else there with you now um and and especially if you are if if you are like of the opposite sex it is good to have a uh, an accountable person there to know that nothing happened, right? Because they're, they're in a very vulnerable state, right? Like so, so the, depending on what kind of demon you're casting out, like um, uh, the, the the person, male or female, on the opposite side getting deliverance is vulnerable, right? Sometimes, right? So so having someone else there and just in case something, you know, like, like th their hands start flailing or something and y and you need someone to like hold them down literally sometimes so it's good to have at least one person there but ideally more like two right and and because then it helps with like with like prayer right because that, now now there's two saints there uh uh helping right one might be writing down one might be just watching and praying right and then and then one and then uh and then having three heads there to to do deliverance is like better you know than just one on one or two on one because now now you have these two people praying at least or 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 taking notes or paying attention to certain body movements or whatever things that are being said and they can catch something that you can't sometimes right so 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 that's that's another thing have like two or three people there and then typically speaking i have at least one other person there if i am doing something that is um for for like another person, whether it's the opposite sex or not, I still try to have two people there. There are times, depending on your relationship with the person, like if it's a family member and they feel comfortable with you, if it's a significant other and they feel comfortable with you, if it's your spouse or, or and, and, and you know, like, and you're anointed and they're anointed, that's fine. You know, that, that, that that's good, what, whatever, right? But still, it would, it, it would be helpful to have someone else there. So that's, that's kind of like, what, that's what I do. So then like during that time, I'm always asking God if we get to a certain point, right? Okay, what, God help us. This is a, a stubborn demon. Like I've said before, like God has sometimes like brought scripture to my head or, or, or ideas or things to ask for, for the demon or the person to renounce or, 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 or like an image will come up that is in relation to the person, right? So there is there is times where um where I, I was helping with deliverance 
And then, then an image popped up in my head, the very thing that we needed to know, right? Something that was like deep down in the person's like subconscious, but they forgot, but God revealed it to me. And I said, yo, I just saw X, Y, and Z. And they're like, oh, actually when I was, you know, this, this, and this, and this happened, right? So then that's where it, it like God aids you in these things, okay? God literally aids you in, in, in these times of, of deliverance. So you have to also be aware of that. So, um, and then also, like, like once you get more into the spiritual realm, you're going to feel the spirit world much more acutely, right? Like, like you're going to feel the presence of the spirits around you, right? When, when you're entering into the spirit realm and that's because your spiritual eye and ear and, and senses are like, are growing stronger because you're actually like actively in it, right? So, so that's where like as you do this more and more like the things that you need to know will come right like better that you do like multiple hours of research read multiple books or at least read the very very important ones and summarize ones and then seek deliverance yourself or start right like like i've heard uh uh isaiah Sal saldivar just say like it's better to just start with what you know, but I would caution you to say no, at least the bare minimum of basics of like legal right renouncing and and how and how the demon should go and 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 at least study the all the all the demonic interaction that we had in the New Testament with Jesus and the disciples, right? At least those and read like at least two or three books and watch like like, because this is a serious matter, I would say at least 20 to 30 hours of, um, of content on YouTube or, or somewhere. Right. And, 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 and in people that are leading in like the deliverance stuff. Right. I'm just like a person that been through it, that knows how it was done and then started doing it because I had so, I had like two and a half years of straight me getting delivered, me in the deliverance seat. Right. So then, and then on top of that, I was also researching and reading and doing all these things. And then it just happened one day, like the ice broke and I just like delivered someone, right? Like, well, well, I helped in a part of the deliverance because deliverance is a process. Okay. So, so that's, a, that's, that's another thing, right? So, um, so then the last thing that I'll say is that for me, I personally tell people to close their eyes because it helps you kind of um, not get distracted. But that, that's just me. That's just me, right? My friend literally tells the people to open their eyes and look at him, right? So he can see the demons in it. But for me, for my deliverance, like at, at first, like, like it, it was just natural. I just naturally closed my eyes. And then like, I was like, you know, then the demon would take over, right? And then one day my friend asked like, why aren't you, why, why don't you open your eyes, right? And then one of the demons responded, like, I don't look at holy men, right? Because my friend walks with God, okay? This, 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 isn't, this isn't some stuff that I'm making up. If you want, contact people that actually do deliverance. You will see the craziest stories. This is this isn't this isn't something that I want to entertain with you guys, right? So like if if you if you if you think I'm here to entertain you, bro, ah, oh hey, you you've got the wrong video. You should have turned it off like at second two at, at two seconds into this video, you should have turned it off. But getting back to the point, so like I tell people to close their eyes because it helps them not get distracted. But it just depends on the person, right? Sometimes like like he, he person is, is cool just looking at, I don't know, however it is in that situation, right? Sometimes you need people to hold the person back. Like for me personally, like I like move and squiggle and stuff when I'm like getting deliverance, right? Other people, they <laughs> they do way more than move and squiggle. Let's just say that. Um, the people break bones, like ribs and stuff. Like like the, the deliverance person, the person doing deliverance sometimes will break a bone or two right? Because it's, it's that rough. Like it, this, this isn't no, like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, the demon came out. We told him to leave. Nah, it's, these demons are violent. Look at, um, the sons of Sceva. They, they beat the people to a bloody pulp. They ran out 
naked. Do you think that's a joke? A bloody pope? A demon beating somebody up? No, that's not a joke. They have strength, okay? So that's why it's good to like at least know some of the more basic things and then just start, okay? Like, but like I said, ideally, I would rather have you get deliverance, right? Get deliverance for a couple months. Get deliverance, depending on how much time you have, right? For me, I had to do it over a span of two years and like, you know, doing six, seven hour sessions sometimes, sometimes three or four. But depending on how much time you have, how young you are, how old you are, you might want to set like weekly, right, times to, 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 to get like an hour or two of deliverance to someone that actually knows what they're doing that's why i have to stress this stuff this is not no child's game okay this is real life okay Th these are spirits that do not care about you they hate you they hate god because they know where they are going okay that's why this is not a joke they know where they're going. So you can't just come up to to, to, to to like a level 10 demon, let's say. I'm just putting it in game terms. While you're like level one and a half. And you're like, oh, I'm here to destroy you. <laughs> oh, well, you know, <laughs> let me go back. No, no, no. You got to game yourself up, right? If you're actually serious about deliverance and getting delivered, read, watch videos, seek deliverance ministers, right? And then like look into the Bible. Because that, that's where all this stems from. Look into the Bible. We've just created like, like guidelines to make the process easier. But we look into the Bible. Look at the interactions, right? That Jesus and the disciples and the demons had with the disciples and the demons had with Jesus. Look at all of it, right? So go, 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 to, go to these things and do it, okay? So just to recap, pray, anoint read a scripture. I, I read a scripture. Like you, you don't have to read a scripture, but like, you know, bless, um, bless the person, ask God to fill his presence, ask the angels to help. And then, and then, then you start the deliverance process of talking to the person. For me, I tell people to close their eyes and relax, right? You, they got to be comfortable, right? They, they, they got to be comfortable, right? Some people are in a chair. Some people are, are, are on a couch. Some people are, are on a bed laying down just so like in whatever comfort level that, that they have, right? Right. Well, well whatever comfort level, because then when they relax, then it's that, then, then they can allow the demon to take over, right? You have to allow it to take over or else it's not going to leave because it has right to be there. It has a right to be there. Okay. So you have to allow it to take over. So that's, the, that's what I do, right? And then I go through the process of what to actually say and do. So in the next video, I'll be talking about like, um, whatever I talk about, I'll, I'll come up with a topic and I'll say it real quick. So.